join you today from Lexington, Kentucky, in action from the SEC, the number 11 team in the country, the Florida Gators, taking on the Kentucky Wildcats. On Wednesday night, Florida celebrated its sixth regular season SEC championship, 15-0 at home, the fifth under Billy Donovan. Welcome to Courtside, everybody. I and Eagle along with Jim Spinark. Great to be with you. College basketball here on CBS, the start of a triple header. We know that basketball is a way of life here in the state of Kentucky. Kentucky. So is being in the NCAA tournament, and there's a chance right now that Kentucky might be on the outside looking in. We check out the tournament resume, Jimmy. Where do the Wildcats stand right now? I and even though they're tied for second in this league, the thing about them is they really don't have that greatest strength of schedule, and they've been struggling recently, losing four out of their last seven games. But this is a terrific opportunity for them to really make some hay and really get the attention of the selection committee with a win against Florida. Right now, let's take a look at our AT&T fast analysis, Florida and Kentucky. One of the things to look for is the way Florida plays defense. They throw a lot of different looks at you. They're the best team in the league defensively. They they will look for double teams and try to get you to release the basketball. But they don't stop in the backcourt. They will follow it all the way up the court, and then they start to play the passing lanes. And when they get the passing lane working, what they do is they turn it into transition offensive basketball. They score it over 70 points a game. They shoot the three ball better than anybody in this league, so watch for their transition offense. Starting lineups, opening tip coming up. Florida and Kentucky going head-to-head -head right here on C. It's the 128th all-time meeting, Florida and Kentucky. Billy Donovan knows all about this rivalry from both sides, an assistant coach at Kentucky for five years in the late 80s, early 90s. Let's check out the starting lineups. Three guards set for the Gators, Wilbekin, Fortin, and Rosario up front. The combination of Murphy and Young. For Kentucky, Wildcats interaction at 20 and 10. Harrow, Mays, and Goodwin, Poitras, and Cauley Stein on the front line. John Calipari now in his 21st year as a head coach at the Division I level. Fourth season with Kentucky, won the national championship last year. Time right now for Northwestern Mutual planning for success. We sat down with Calipari yesterday, and he said, quote, it's a one-game season. I told these guys, you have to fight. If you want to do something special, this is your chance. Taking on the team that won the SEC regular season title, John Calipari, they talked at great length about the frustration with this current group of Wildcats and the fact that he really needs to see the combination of Harrell and Porthras step forward. Yeah, because of the age of those guys, they have to step up. Tony Green, Pat Adams, Ron Groover, the officiating crew. Florida won the first meeting between these two teams, February the 12th. And Kentucky controls the tip here at Rupp. We're underway. Early on, watch for the pressure by Florida, especially on the perimeter with the guards. I think Harrow is one of the keys to this game for Kentucky. Paulie Stein missed it. On the inside, it's Poitras there to clean it up. And Poitras is a guy I who's also mentioned saying he was a little frustrated in himself. He thinks he can go with another level and really execute better. Great start for him off the glass. Kentucky has won three in a row at home. Victories over Vanderbilt, Missouri, and Mississippi State. Here's Will Bikin for Florida. Just stay off the road if you're Kentucky lately, huh? Murphy, the drive, oh. rejected by Coley Stein. Harrell the other way. The cutter, good one for the jam. What a great break, too, off that block. The block was almost as good as an outlet pass. Billy Donovan wants to talk things over and quickly. 48 seconds in. Timeout. Florida. Hot start for Kentucky, a 4-0 lead over Florida. And a quick timeout called by Billy Donovan, a change in the lineup as well as Prather checks in, the junior from Jackson, Tennessee. As Billy Donovan said moments ago to us, I this is going to be a great crowd. He would expect some great excitement here. Young forced out of there. They wanted to travel. The strip, the senior Mays had it. Knocked towards the sideline. Poitras the dive. And here come the Wildcats the other way. They're playing to the crowd by diving on the floor so often. Mays to the hoop with a floater. Uh, this is going so well early on for Kentucky. 
And let's see what the guards can do in the backcourt for Florida to respond on the road here. Florida coming off a 66-40 win over Vanderbilt on Wednesday night. A great look up top. And it's Young soaring to the rim. One of the things this team is so good at is passing the basketball. Billy Donovan likes to set a goal of 17 to 23 assists per game. Sharing unselfish basketball is how the Gators are successful. Kentucky opens up three of four from the field. All their points in the paint. Can't score from the outside as Goodwin is off the mark. Tracked down by Wilbekin. Trying to get into their offense early here. The Gators trail 6-2. Another roll for Young. Young. Put it up high, Coley Stein knocked it out of there, and it's retrieved by Borton. Rosario, the ball fake, and Coley Stein with the rejection. Poitras the other way, hard to the hole, and he draws the foul. And Coley Stein is looking for the bench to get a sub, I believe, in early eye, and he's I'm not sure if it's he took one to the chest just then, but defensively, he's just roaming around. Timing is very good. The spacing as a big guy. Second block for Cauley Stein since the Nerlens Noel injury that took place in the first meeting between these two teams. Cauley Stein has been asked to do more. And block shots is one of them because we do know that Noel was terrific at it. Some changes for Florida as Cauley Stein will sit down replaced by Wiltshire. And Florida now sends in Michael Frazier along with Eric Murphy. 70% shooter, Poitras out of Clarksville, Tennessee, the freshman. One out of two. And it's rebounded by Prather. Just looking at the Kentucky bench, Coley Stein, it just looked like he needed a quick breather just then, maybe with the pace going up and down so quickly. Remember, he didn't play a lot of minutes prior to the Noel injury. Kick out, Frazier comes up short. And is rebounded by Poitras. Florida's one of five from the field. Kentucky looking to push, but they really have to make good decisions, both in their half court and their transition game. Arrow gives it up. Gets it back with 19 to shoot. Tried the stutter step. Arrow to the hoop. He lays it in. I think he's the key for this team. When he plays well, when he's under control, when he's passing the basketball, it's a different look that Kentucky throws at you. Will McKinn, the three. Off the rim, Poitras the board. Florida comes in number one in the SEC in shooting, 48.8% per game. And they knock it back from the three-point stripe also, number one in the league. They shoot the three-pointer at 38%, and number one defending the three. three yeah. And number one in field goal defense. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty pretty good number ones along the way statistically. I think there's a reason why they won the regular season championship. <laughs> Wiltshire to the hoop. Bank shot, no. Tip doesn't go. Goodwin got a piece of it. Wiltshire's a shooter from the outside. He doesn't put the ball on the floor quickly. Murphy to Putin. He lines it up. Too strong. 9-2 Kentucky. Chance to add to it. Harrow down the middle. And he banks it in. Ryan Harrow, the sophomore from Marietta, Georgia. Up. A little bit of a mission going to the basket that trip, forcing the action. I love it because he's playing confidently, under control, and going to his left makes a very difficult shot. Florida has missed its last five shots. Murphy trying to change that, and he draws the foul on the inside. Important hesitation, one trip, breaking it down off the glass, and the other one in the open floor to give Kentucky a great start on their home floor. Talented Kentucky freshman Nerlens Noel in attendance here at Rupp. Noel tore his ACL on February the 12th against Florida. Getting back defensively, Rosario driving that knee buckle, the left knee. Kentucky is 3-3 three and three since that season-ending injury. Noel was averaging an NCAA best 4.4 blocks per game. You see the difference in the numbers before the injury and since the injury for this Kentucky team. Well, he had 12 games with five or more blocks. And not only that, Ian, guess who the steals leader was on this team until his injury? He had 50 steals, so he's very, very active. And I think that play that we just saw, the one that he got injured, for folks who didn't, have never seen him play, 
the way that big guy was running the floor in transition defense, giving it his all, that's mm -hmm. exactly how he played. And it's such an unfortunate injury for them as a team, and most importantly, as an individual. Oh, it's a game changer. Yeah. Opponent points per game now up over 10 differential. Mm -hmm. Kentucky had just cracked the top 25. They felt their chemistry was starting to really develop. And obviously had to start from square one with Cauley Stein stepping into the starting lineup. Jared Polson is in after Murray Murphy made a couple of free throws. Here's Wiltshire giving it up for Goodwin. And Polson coming off 18 minutes of, against Georgia the other night. Just a steady player has to be mistake free. Mays fires. Can't hit the three. Rebounded by Boynton for Florida. Boynton. Foul, Cauley Stein went for the steal out front. Florida's going to be the number one seed in the SEC tournament next week in Nashville. 14 and three record in the conference. Missouri, Ole Miss, Kentucky, all at 11 and six, along with Alabama. Tennessee is 10 and seven, 18 and 11 overall. And this is why looking at Kentucky right there, Ian, at 11 and six, tied for second place. This is a huge game for them in terms of. A couple of things. It gets the attention of a lot of people across the, the country. And number two, it gives them the confidence getting ready for the tournament. On a kick out. Murphy can really stroke it. Eric Murphy, the senior from South Kingston, Rhode Island, shooting it at 46% from three-point territory. He's got five. Florida now down by four. And that was the extra pass. And when Florida passes the ball, guys are ready to shoot. Nice grab. And a foul on the push. Cauley Stein trying to establish himself inside. There's the look, and watch the leg work. Terrific, squared up, waiting for the shot, understanding that his pass is going to come. He just has to wait his turn to get a good look. Boynton back in. He replaces Frazier. John Hood is in for Kentucky. Spread the floor with Harrow, defended by Wilbekin. Cauley Stein way outside. Young comes out. Cauley Stein to the basket. He can't finish it. Triggers a break. Rosario a crossover. And Hood with a block shot. Rosario knocks it away. Mays had it ricochet and can't save it. Now Rosario thought he had a layup just then. And that was just a terrific effort defensively and unfortunately for Kentucky. You take a look. Here's the layup. Okay, I have one right there. It's an easy one. No, no, says Hood. He pushes it away. And then, unfortunately, for Kentucky, they just turn it over. John Hood, Mr. Basketball in the state of Kentucky in 2009 out of North Hopkins, Madisonville, Kentucky. Boynton. Hood fell on the play, able to recover. Wilbekin lines it up. Rims out. Young trying to tap it outside, and a foul called underneath. Yeah, Hood was hanging on him. Coach Cal not happy with the call. That one occurred right in front of him. So Hood will pick it up. And Florida maintains possession. The positioning of Young on the offensive glass. Coach Cal trying to get some attention over there, isn't he? He's trying to get the fans wild, riled up, too. Florida is 2 of 10 from the field. That ball was tipped and then hit behind the backboard, which is out of bounds. So Florida will retain it. One second comes off the timer. Wilbekin gets it in. Murphy trying to take the baseline. He turns it over. Bracket games are back and now open to join. Create your group or compete against the nation at cbssports.com slash brackets. 14-14 mark of this first half. Kentucky just came out with a burst. But Florida has cut into the lead. 11-7, Wildcats in front. Watch for the double team, as we talked about on the open right there. Arrow gets it across for Poitras. A little late on the sideline double team, but they like to run that double team in the back court defensively, the Gators, and then look for a wing double team. The 110th season of basketball at Kentucky. And some activity away from the ball. Rosario was bodying up against Poitras. And it will be... Mike Rosario, Jersey City, New Jersey native, just like my broadcast partner. There you go. Jersey City's in the house, I told him. Yeah. Well, at least two of you are. <laughs> that might be it. Down here in Kentucky. <laughs> that might be it. We're dominating Lexington, Kentucky. 
Four-point lead for Kentucky. Harrell looking down low. Will you get is in for the first time for Florida. A lot of activity for him defensively. Poitras turns. You get trying to use the body and a steal. Well, Poitras just has to be a little more under control with that move because he had pretty good positioning with his body. On a dump down, Murphy will now circle. Boynton looking to make something happen. Nice pop. The pick and pop. Murphy short. Good box out there by Poitras. Should be able to get that with Pauly Stein playing him and also with him coming out defensively. Watch for the Gator guards to drive it through the middle of the floor. Florida one of six from three-point territory here in the first seven minutes of action. Harrow, head and shoulder fake. Rosario came from behind to take it away and he streaks in for the deuce. John Calipari takes a timeout. 7-0 run for the Florida Gators. The pressure. Florida will clamp you down defensively and turn it into offense. Well, John Calipari told his team the pressure from Florida will be intense. And here's the fact of the matter. I think there are some from the outside looking in that say, well, what does Florida have to play for? They've already wrapped up the regular season title. We talked to Billy Donovan earlier. He reminded his team, from here on out, you're not playing at home. This is the environment you have to get used to. You've got to get accustomed to the idea that there's no more undefeated record at home where they've right. been so comfortable, 15-0 at the O'Connell Center, and get into that mindset. It's postseason time. That's a good call. Foul is called. Poitras tried to make his move on the blocks. Wilbekin was there. Yeah, and, and what I think Donovan is also referring to, Ian, is the fact that we've got to put in a sense of urgency on every single time we step on the floor from this point on. Because if you lose, big deal today in terms of it's not a one and done, you're not out of anything. But he wants to build that confidence in the routine and the consistency and the mental approach and toughness for his team. Second foul on Wilbekin, such an important player to this Florida team. So now they have to shift things around with Frazier checking back in. Orton can handle the ball, Rosario as well. Wilbekin's like the wild card in my mind. Goodwin, side rim on a three. And a flat shot. Florida with a chance to tie or take the lead depending on shot selection. Boynton in a mismatch against Cauley Stein. Boynton on the spin. Rebound, Murphy stripped to the ball, knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Kentucky. Jared Polson will come on for Kentucky, and he will replace Archie Goodwin, the freshman. So it's Harrow and Polson in the backcourt with Mays up front, Cauley Stein and Poitras. Frazier, Boynton, Yaget, Murphy, and Rosario for Florida. Young is now going to step in for Murphy. Yeah, one of the things, Florida, they've had troubles all season long with some of their injuries and illnesses, and now all of a sudden they're getting their depth back. You know, Frazier gives them some good opportunities, too, against Vandy. He had six points, six rebounds in only 22 minutes, so he's pretty active off the bench. A rest for Poitras. Wiltshire is back in. Double up on Borton. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Rosario using the screen set by Yaget. Entry. Young. Perfectly done. Rosario with a terrific pass from way outside. Sometimes that's a difficult pass to make because you don't really have a true angle to get it to the post. That means a guy like Young has to really free himself. 9-0 run. Harrell can't end it. And Kentucky is closing in on five minutes without a field goal. Florida with a chance to take the lead. Rosario, he just threw it right to Mays. Pretty good balance defensively, though, by Florida. Kentucky doesn't have numbers. Wiltshire. Will clear it. Ball movement. Harrow against Yaget. High screen. Cauley Stein. Now a switch. Polson. Harrow fires. Got it. A three. Once again, I think as we talked about with Wilbekin on the other side, Harrow I think is so important as a wild card for this team. He's young. He's hard nosed, but he has to make good decisions. And what he does, it's a different Kentucky ball club. Uh -oh. Yaget to the rim. Can't get it to go, but a foul. Will you get from Bordeaux, France? And the athletic swingman will shoot a pair when we come back to Lexington. Go 
we're trying to illustrate how tough a job the committee has, not only getting the teams into the tournament, making the selection, but then where do you place them? Here you go, Jimmy. Three resumes for potential two seeds. How would you rate them? Well, first of all, I like their names. How do I look? What about me? And like what you see? Where'd we come up with that? But if I looked from right to left on this one, I think I like this side of the column first because of all the things they've shown, especially their eight and three through the top 50 they're playing. And then I would go with the middle. I think I'd go with what about me? And on the left, how do I look? Not as good as the other two's for two seeds. <laughs> like what you see? I mean, like them apples, I guess you could say, huh? Well, Gonzaga would be the team, and at least not knowing the schools behind the numbers, that would fall in as the third best resume of those three. And they could right. get a one seed. Yeah, right. The difficulty of this is when you look at it like that, right, and you don't have the names in front of you, but you're absolutely right. I have them as a number one seed right now, Gonzaga. And the thing about it is if they run the table, how are you going to not put them there as a number one? Very difficult. Wiltshire off the mark. Tracked down by Cauley Stein. Here's Polson now taking it to the rim. Jared Polson. Only scores at three points a game, Ian. So he's looking to pass quickly. And I thought he was looking for Pauly Stein on that drive, but a good little scoop. Rosario can't bank it in. Look at Young's position. He's getting great offensive position, Young. Spread the floor now. Rosario one on one with Colson. Oh, foul called. Somebody got thrown out of there. Pauly Stein got into it with Young on the interior. And that's going to be number two on the big man from Kansas. Watch this little drive. He starts to look over there at first and then continues to come through the lane. And then watch to your right of your screen how coming this way over here, Young gets thrown out. And that's what the official snag. So Willie Cauley Stein to the bench. There's Borton now. There's the big guy at home, huh? He's sitting on the bench. So great time to be driving to the basket. Kenny Borton, senior from Pompano Beach, Florida. What a career he's put together. The winningest senior class in Florida history, Borton and Murphy. Tough shot. Arrow got caught in no man's land. Kentucky up by two. The only thing that shot allowed was for them to get in defensive transition balance because it was such a bad shot they weren't down the floor in enough time. They converge on Murphy. Boynton is open. Rims out on a three. Rebounded by Harrow for Kentucky. 9.32 to play in this first half. Neither team shooting it particularly well. In fact, Florida's down to 29%. Kentucky's at 41%. Olsen with 15 to shoot. Boyfuss and Young underneath is a pretty nice matchup, isn't it? Body-wise, at least. Mays, that's a long three. Way off. Murphy couldn't track it down. Wiltshire does. Harrell cuts to the rim. And it's blocked on the inside. Boynton coming the other way with a head of steam. Oh, baby. Boynton to the hoop. Terrific move by Kenny Boynton taking it to the basket. Well, the, the wild play at the offensive end for Kentucky. Florida gathered. They fell down. Murphy fell down, but they were able to regroup enough to have three guys back in the lane for that drive by Harrell. Tied at 16, 8.35 left in this first half. Will begin on the bench with two fouls for Florida. Cauley Stein on the bench with two fouls for Kentucky. Mays directing traffic. Trying to get Poitras involved here. Mays, another long three. This one goes. Julius Mays from downtown, the senior from Marion, Indiana. They really have to get him on track, though. In the last two games coming in, he was one for eight from three. Rosario off the mark. Colson in transition. Mays looking for it again. 858 straight games with at least one three-pointer for Kentucky. Third longest streak in the nation. Three-point lead for the Wildcats. Back-to-back -back losses to Arkansas and Georgia on the road. Quakers off a double. Harrow is there. And can't get it to go. Yeah. Foul is called. Yep, good call by Harrow with the reaching. I love the energy level in this building right now. Every single whistle that goes against Kentucky, they're showing the support for their team. 
Second foul on Harrow, sixth team foul against Kentucky. This is the guy they got to get on track from long range, Mays. First half action here in Lexington, 1916. Kentucky, neither team shooting it well. Boynton with four points. Harrell leads the way for the Wildcats with seven. Welcome back, everybody. I and Eagle along with Jim Spinarco, and the fans are close by here in Lexington. Are they booing us? No, no. Oh, okay. Maybe you. Maybe you they heard know. about your Jersey City roots. There we go. Uh, 23,000 fans here in Lexington, and you felt their presence. They recognize how important this is. Right. Well, and that last call is what they were reacting to when the teams came back out, the officials just to give it to them. Ryan Harrow called for that foul, and that's two fouls against him. Very important player for Kentucky, so they're now going to have to go with Paulson a little bit more. They'll have Hood in their backcourt along with Mays. Coley Stein has a couple of blocks, but he's on the bench with those two fouls, and since that point, Florida has gotten two straight layups. Here's Murphy taking it to the rim. And there's just no resistance on that back line for Kentucky. Yeah, Wilcher not a factor getting in front of him at all, and Murphy recognizing once I get my left shoulder around him on the right side of the floor, it's going to be an easier layup. Murphy now has seven. Florida cuts it to one. Two-man game with Polson and Wiltshire. Good win to the hoop. He draws the foul. Archie Goodwin is going to the free throw line. Earlier call that drew the ire of these Kentucky fans was against Harrow in a crowd. Yeah, you know, that's, I mean, that's a difficult call. Little guy against the big guy. I mean, both of them were pushing, shoving. Maybe I'll let him tell the reaction story here. But nonetheless, it goes against Harrow, and that's two fouls against him, the true point guard. Prather called for the foul on the other end for Florida. And Goodwin gets the roll in the first attempt, 64% shooter. And the last 15 shots coming in, 7 to 15 from the free throw line. Billy Donovan's team, I thought, did a nice job here uh, in that first wave in the first yep. four minutes where Kentucky was playing as if they were the SEC champs on a roll, and then Florida came back. Coming up tomorrow on The Amazing Race, travel to exotic Bali, where the heat is on and the surf's up. New episode tomorrow at 8, 7 Central, only CBS. Florida opened up 2-11. Gators have hit on five of their last nine attempts from the field. Kentucky with a three-point lead. Murphy, the jump shot goes. Eric Murphy, the inside-outside abilities. His dad, Jay, of course, played at B.C. and then in the NBA with the Clippers and Washington. His brothers at Duke, Alex. And the understanding of Murphy just then, as you touched on the size at 6'10", but he had Mays at 6'2", arms, so why not shoot the 15-footer? Mays now a switch. Murphy out front defending him. Shot clock at 15. Mays, they give him the open look, and he connects a three. And as I touched on, he's been struggling shooting the ball from long range. But if he, if he can get the rhythm, what that does is it really brings and extends the court defensively, which will allow Kentucky to move a little bit better underneath in the post play. Coming in, Mays had hit on just one of his last 12 field goal attempts. Good answer there by Prather. He's another guy off the bench that Billy Donovan loves. He can put some points up in a hurry. He's had a couple of double-digit 10-point games recently, so... Depth is a key for Florida. They're getting healthier. Wiltshire, the back end. And the hook shot doesn't go. Up the floor in a hurry. Horton. Pull up top. No good. Rebounded by Yaget. Yaget fighting for position. New shot clock to work with here for Florida. Boynton makes his move. Kenny Boynton to the basket. Starting to pick up the steam, running the show a little bit better. Boynton slowly started this game in the first three or four minutes when that Kentucky blitz hit him, but Florida's starting to show some better poise right now. A confident, aggressive, hybrid guard, Kenny Boynton, second all-time on Florida's scoring list for career numbers. The explosion. Wiltshire, no good. Rebounded weak side by Murphy. Tied at 24. Just under five minutes to play in this first half from Ruck. Here's Prather, one-on-one -on -one with Hood. Working around the perimeter. Boynton. Murphy, the open look. Rims out. The follow. That doesn't go as Prather had an opportunity. 
up the floor. May steps into the three. Oh, way off. That's a hard one to shoot on a full out gallop down the floor. You get kick out. Boynton lines it up. Bottom for three. Florida's got its first lead of the day. Timeout, Kentucky. 27 24. The Gators on a 7 0 run. We have a good one early on here. Florida, Kentucky. Kenny Boynton starting to take control a little bit. Nice drive to the basket, putting it off the deck. And then here's the patience. The extra look, the diagonal. Sometimes when there's a breakdown and a wild play in transition, that's when you generally get the best look you're going to get in that set. Boynton doing a good job. Second in school history. Check, it, check those numbers out, huh? Ronnie Williams, the all-time leading scorer with 2,090 points, played at Florida from 1981 to 1984. Kenny Boynton, number one in career three-pointers at Florida, and his 135th career start, which is also a Gators record. Murphy with nine, Boynton with nine. See if they look, here it comes, the double team. They always look for it, then they put some pressure on. Goodwin gets it ahead for Polson. Now it's Mays, knocked out of there by Boynton. Is that a double tip? It was. Mays is asking for help from the other official, Ron Groover. You know, sometimes the double tip is just a feel that you get. And let's take a look. One, two. Yeah, I think that's going to slide off Mays last. Maybe on the off. Yeah. And what happens, the official from behind doesn't get a good look at that. He needs help to make the call. That is the fourth Kentucky turnover. Florida with a three-point lead in the ball. Here's Rosario. Back in there for Florida. Frazier looking for the dump down. Young. That is an added weapon for Patrick Young. So strong, physically imposing at 6'9, 250 pounds. And the double on Polson. There's a three on two if they hurry. Good win to the hoop. Tough angle. It's tipped in. Poitras was there. Just at the right time also because that ball was very close to sitting on that rim just then. That ends a 9-0 run. Florida is in front by three. Three and a half to go in this first half. Boyton the stutter step. Straight through the pump fake. Leans in. Blocked from behind by Wiltshire. Trying to get out of transition. Mays gives it up. Good no shot there by Mays just then. Rosario closed on him quickly. Good reset here by Kentucky. Try to keep some rhythm at the offensive end of the floor. Lat. Nice. Pulse nice. into the hoop. That's Jared the, pulls it off the ball movement. I and that's the blind cut. You pass that ball to the wing, and the point guard instinctively takes his eye off the basketball, and it's a terrific time for your forward to throw a blind entry pass to a cutting guard. Boyden pushing it towards the rim. Knocked outside. Here's Mays now leading the way for the Wildcats. Leaves it for Wiltshire. Under three minutes to go, first half. Polson, the former walk-on, earned a scholarship for John Calipari, seeing extended minutes. Harrow's on the bench. Nice look. Mays wasn't going to take that shot on Young. Goodwin tries on the inside. That's when you have to recognize who's behind you. That was Young standing there, way too big and strong to go after. Here's the steal. And it's Goodwin. He's a high flyer. Oh, he makes up for it in a hurry, though. Coming back and bringing the transition back home for Kentucky. Terrific effort after he got snuffed by Young. 30-29. to 29. Wildcats lead it with 1.57 to go. First half. Rosario the lob. Young battling, and he travels. Young thought he was going to get a clean alley-oop, and during his flight, it was effective. Well, the activity is pretty good. Take a look at Goodwin breaking that down. A nice steal from behind, finishing it off. to get these people a little crazier here in Kentucky. Up to the Final Four in Atlanta here on CBS. Coming up, AT&T at the half. Greg Gumbel, Greg Anthony, Seth Davis. Scores and highlights, latest NCAA tournament news. That's all coming up. AT&T at the half. 
30 to 29, Kentucky. Both teams shooting it at 40%. Rebounding numbers very close. Florida 19-18. Turnovers close. Kentucky 5. Florida 4. All the numbers are even in a one-point game. Knocked away, out of bounds. Kentucky will retain it with 13 to shoot. The last home loss for Kentucky to Florida back in 2007. Shot clock's down to two. Good win, a heave. Oh, short. Rosario trying to dig it out. You get goes for it. And it's tracked down by Borton. A good collective effort just then by Florida. Staying home, nobody ran out until they gathered that basketball in. Under a minute to play now, first half. Rosario, a switch, he's got Poitras. Go by him, too. Kick out. Murphy. Now it's Borton with 12 to shoot. The spin by Prather. Shot clock down to seven. Murphy nails it. The baseline delivery, he's got 11. Well, that ability at 6'10 to be able to shoot over people is a stretch four on this team and has a soft shot. So when he gets it and he gets it in traffic sometimes, he's smart enough to just wait for the people to go by him defensively. Florida up by one. Two-second difference. Shot clock the game clock. Winding down in this first half at Ruck. And Florida with only five team fouls right now. Goodwin holds. 14 to shoot. Eight on the timer. Goodwin with five. Makes his move. Goodwin knocked away. Draws the foul. With 5.8 on the game clock. Prather will pick up his second foul. And John Hood's going to check in after the first free throw by Goodwin. You know, one of the things about Goodwin Iron is he, he's much better going to his right. He's okay going to his left, but Florida's trying to force him to the left side. Whereas you notice that he had a little bit more trouble getting that shot off. The key is for him to get to that free throw line and make sure he makes these things. Mr. Basketball in the state. 7 Central only. CBS. Missed them both. Wiltshire the potential of the rebound and another foul is called. Kentucky keeping the ball alive and Florida picks up a foul at the 3.2 mark. Murphy with his second, and it will send Goodwin back to the free throw line. Well, the activity, right? Just get a hand on the ball as best you can. And now he goes right back to the line, though. Has to get this confidence up. Looking for the tie first. It's there. Kentucky is 18-1 and one this season when leading at halftime, and Goodwin has a chance to give Kentucky a one-point lead. Goodwin has seven. McDonald's All-American. Cal, since he's been a Kentucky Iron, 66 and 2 on his home floor. Not too shabby. No. <laughs> I thought that was a misprint. <laughs> Rosario won't get it off in time. We are all even at 31 apiece at the end of the first half. Florida and Kentucky. SEC battle as we send it to New York. Greg Gumbel standing by to get you all caught up. Capital of the world, Lexington, Kentucky, tied at 31. As we get ready for second half action, Ian Eagle along with Jim Spadarco here at Rupp. And competitive first half, you know that Kentucky's yep. got a sense of urgency considering everything's on the line. Florida took that first punch, though. Absolutely, and a terrific atmosphere also. So the Kentucky players are playing to that. After that first four minutes of the game, they went after it, and then they bounced back in the last yep. four minutes of the first half. Take a look at the Liberty Mutual first half statistics. What stands out, if anything, for you, Jim? Well, I think the balance stands out when you take a look at it. Both of these teams having trouble shooting the ball from the long range. But for the most part, everything, as in the score, is close statistically. So a terrific first half, a lot of action. A lot of guys playing very hard at both ends of the floor. And we lace up the shoes and we go at it again. Willie Cauley-Stein limited to just eight minutes because of foul trouble. The big man for Kentucky. Drop step. Young. Cauley-Stein closes and takes it away. His third block of the day. The drop step got Young no place. It didn't get him any advantage. So that's why Cauley-Stein was able to just seal him underneath the basket. 
Here's Mays. Tried the drive on Rosario. Now clear it for Harrow. Just underway, second half. Harrow, the penetration, looped his way in for the bucket. Uh, he's got to start off strongly, I think, Ian, and that was a terrific extension. If you notice that last move on that drive to get his shot off, he just reached out just a touch further past the defender to get it off. That's nine points now for the sophomore, Ryan Harrow. Will begin. He sat for a good portion of that first half with two fouls. Looking to get Young involved here. Rosario stripped away. Mays tipped it first, then Goodwin came over to help. It's going to be a carbon copy of the first three minutes of this game. Poitras outside for Harrow. Mays thought about it. Rosario closes in. Cauley Stein, the high screen. Good one. Back to Cauley Stein for the slam. Well, Cauley Stein missed Mays on the first cut. He gave it up and released. Didn't Billy Donovan call a timeout about the same, just a little bit longer this time in the second half. First two points of the day for Willie Cauley Stein. Kentucky up four early second half. Well, defensively, we're going to see Cauley Stein go to work on Young. He does not allow him to drop step and go by him. And then here's that little give and go. The pick and roll, Cauley Stein finishing it off. So just like the first three minutes of the beginning of this game, Kentucky put together a nice run, and they've started here again at the beginning of the second half. Cauley Stein was a high school wide receiver, <laughs> 1140 yards his senior year and 14 touchdowns. How about you're told you're going to cover that guy? I'd love to be the QB, though, huh? Seven Just foot. Let's throw it out there. <laughs> Anywhere close. Go get it, big boy. 35-31, Kentucky. Wilbekin gives it up. Young can't finish it. And Cauley Stein will get credit for his fourth block. Good one to the rim. And a foul call. He'll shoot a pair. Sometimes you judge shot blockers when they've helped out and have to recover. And that was just picture perfect. Here he comes back after helping out. Young thinks he's going to dunk the basketball. But no way. Cauley Stein just really stepping it up defensively. The first two efforts for Florida at their offensive end of the floor. So Archie Goodwin back to the strike. Seven points on two of eight from the field. He scored in double digits in 22 of his 30 collegiate games. Paulie Stein has four blocks now in 10 minutes of game action. Seven foot, 244 pounds. He's added some weight. Initially, a lot of people thought he would be a project, but he's developed nicely in his freshman year and obviously seeing more time with the injury to Noel. Yeah, and with that injury, he's, his numbers have improved, scoring a little better, rebounding somewhat, but the shot blocking is really where they can he can anchor a defense. 36-31, Florida yet to score in this second half. Well, the kid mismatch with Cauley Stein. Now they'll switch back. Rosario to the hoop. Nice dump off inside for Yaget. Rosario dragging everybody with him, too, from the right side to the left. That's one of the things that Florida can use the, the bounce. They can pass the ball, keep it unselfish, and use both sides of the floor. Most teams at the offensive end look a little bit better. And a foul underneath. Getting tied up. Michael Frazier in that area for Florida. And you see, look, Cauley Stein comes flying across to help out. And that's just a beautiful drop pass after he drags everybody to from one side to the other. Mike Rosario, the transfer from Rutgers, scored over 1,000 points with the Scarlet Knights in two years. Now in his senior season. 17-22 mark, second half, 36-33, Kentucky. Arrow gives it up for Poitras. They wanted to shoot that 12-footer. May not get a, be a look as good as that. Mays circles, needs some help. Harrow comes to the ball, the penetration. Harrow to the hoop. And it goes on the follow. Poitras came firing through along with Goodwin. I think it might have been Poitras who got there quickly along the baseline after turning down a shot. And once again, the fans starting to support. That was what John Calipari was hoping for this afternoon. 38-33, Kentucky to the post. Yaget is hacked. 
I mean, you take a look at the traffic. Poitras is right under the basket. Let's see if he gets up quick enough. Yep, looks like him who gets his hand on it and guides it back over the rim. Five points, six rebounds for Poitras. And two free throws coming up for Will Yaget, a 57% free throw shooter. Monday, when two broke girls get a business opportunity, they'll do anything to make it happen. Catch two broke girls Monday at 9, 8 central, only CBS. Kentucky has scored on all four of its possessions in the second half. You get looked okay shooting that first free throw. Will you get yeah, one out of two? You get missed seven games after a knee injury, and Billy Donovan told us before the game it's been tough for him getting back into the flow of things. Coley Stein to Harrow to the hoop. Ryan Harrow a dipsy do. Boy, is he so good at using the extra emphasis to extend his body. That's the second time we've seen that. 11 for Harrow inside. Wilberkin finds you get, but he can't finish it. Kentucky with a six point lead. Where they have to play smart basketball right here. Coley Stein, the back in. Kicks it out for Poitras. That's pretty smart. A little breakdown just then, but we got you have plenty of time on the shot clock at 15. Arrow tried to curl. Wilbekin cuts him off. Excellent on the ball defender. And a foul called out front. You see what Goodwin wants to go right just then. It's a simple thing. Oh, here you go, though. Take a look. Here he comes. Watch the extension coming through. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA men's basketball will continue after this message in a word from your local station. Kentucky and Florida here at Rupp Arena. How did you get up there that fast? Well, oh, versatile. <laughs> big Blue Nation. Yeah, give the guy a high five. <laughs> Put in a big effort. March Madness. It all starts March the 19th. Four networks, CBS, TNT, TBS, and True TV. It is wide open in 2013. Wiltshire. On a bounce, Poitras to back in. Poitras wheels to the inside and uses the offhand. Nice call just then by John Calipari to get a good shot, get it the post down, force Florida double team. Rosario to the hoop, that quiets the crowd. Florida now two of five from the field in the second half. Kentucky is five of six. A little point in Rosario to get active with the dribble. Wilbekin getting off the bench, he'll be coming back. Arrow couldn't find an opening. Wilcher a jumper. Wilcher struggling from the outside. He is 0 of 4 from the field. Boynton to the hoop, dumps it off to the wrong team. Good one looking to accelerate. He's fouled at midcourt. So Kentucky with a six point lead, just about five minutes gone by in this second half. Coming up, game two of our NCAA on CBS triple header. UCLA visits Washington. Brian Anderson and Doug Gottlieb will have the call later on. Notre Dame and Louisville. Vern Lundquist, Mike Chuminski will have that one for you at 4 o'clock Eastern right here on CBS. Now Washington's won three and of their last home games, Zion, so that'll be a difficult one. And how about the Louisville Notre Dame game? Harrow, extra two. Rebound, you get, couldn't grab it. Coley Stein is in the right spot. And he gets the bucket on the interior. Wilbekin to the hoop, left hand, no. And a foul called. Aggressive play by Scotty Wilbekin, taking it to the basket. Well, you take a look, Coley Stein coming out from the outside, working his way to a good position. Oof, that was close. Very tight. Yeah, I don't know if he's reestablished. Wilbekin at the line for two. So Scotty Wilbekin will shoot a pair. Third foul on Coley Stein. Anytime you get the big guy moving, it's a great time to go after him. Wilbekin that time just had him moving, and big guys out on the floor trying to stop the small guys when they're driving it's a distinct advantage for the guards Murphy back in 
And Boynton's going to get a rest. Will begin a 69% shooter. His first point of the day. Now, one of the things about him is sometimes a little out of control. The last two games, he's had seven turnovers combined. So it's one of the things, especially on the road, you have to make those decisions on the fly, but you have to make good ones. Backed up Irving Walker the last two years at that point guard spot, and Wilbekin has really done the job. And this is what he does very well, Wilbekin on the point. Defends. Kevin Stallings of Vanderbilt said he might be the best in the league at defending the point off the dribble. Pauly Stein, spin to the rim. Ball was tipped. And a foul called on the baseline. It's going to work against Billy Donovan's squad. That is Murphy at number three. Willie Cauley Stein, a presence defensively. Uh, he sure has been right from the beginning of the game. He's been staying at home, as all seven footers should do. His recoveries have been very good. That was number three. And say hello to number four, Patrick Young, on the block when he thought he had a dunk. He is a 36% free throw shooter, though. He's not a bad looking wow. stroke at all. And you know what? I, it, sometimes the numbers don't indicate, you know, if you shoot 20 shots, sometimes mm -hmm. you get off. But he came in shooting 73 shots, so it's a pretty good amount to have that kind of percentage. Last touch by Florida. Kentucky will hold on to it with a seven point lead. Just about six minutes elapsed in this second half. Now, Billy Donovan's team, they've had balanced scoring throughout the year. Five starters. The differential from the leading score to the fifth leading score is just three and a half points. Just about five scoring in double figures. Wilberton at 9.1. Kentucky up by seven. Mays against Rosario. High screen. Cauley Stein. Mays thought about the three. Harrell, the teardrop. That's a pretty good effort by Florida defensively just then. And a strong rebound by Prather. Wilbekin. Kick out. Prather dumps it down low. It's a three-second call. Young had camped down in the lane. Or a foul on Coley Stein. That's number four. As Young was trying to set up inside. And getting down the floor, John Calipari not in love with this call at all. But watch where Patrick Young stands and holds his ground. Well, you know what? Coley Stein has his left hand pulling back on the shirt a little bit. The officials caught him. Not the most aggressive foul. Rosario is fouled, and it changes the whole complexion of the game because Florida is much more comfortable now going towards the rim without Coley Stein back there. And you saw it on the first play. After Coley Stein went to the bench, Rosario took it to the hoop. Rosario at the line for two. Well, you have Poitras in there who's only blocked 12 shots coming in today, so it changes the whole dynamics of defensively like you just touched on, Ian, in terms of put it on the floor, selectively challenge, make them defend. How about Florida, where they fit into the big jigsaw puzzle of the NCAA tournament? I think they've had a terrific year, actually. You know, they played well on their home floor, which they got that business done. Look at their RPI as number six. Pretty good strength of schedule. And I, and I think to your point that you just made before, Ian, in terms of the balance offensively, where they have scoring, and, and to Billy Donovan's point before the game to us, taking that balance of scoring and the unselfish play and getting on a roll. Yeah. But I think their depth is a little weak right now in terms of coming off these injuries. Harrell almost had it taken away. The one question mark you have also in the half-court sector, they have somebody they could dump it down inside to when they really need a bucket. I don't think so. Poitras denied. Good help defense there by Prather. Good decisions right here at Key. Welbekin. Pretty tough good. delivery. Yeah, that was a pretty nice decision, wasn't it? You, you see him going through the middle of the floor, making some judgments, gets it to the point of scoring, and then he waits because he knows guys are going to be coming at him and jumping at him. It's an 8 1 run for Florida. And Cauley Stein in a helpless position right now, watching from the bench with four fouls. Well, Coley Stein probably sits there until the five minute mark, depending on how this game goes. Wilcher turns on Murphy, eight to shoot. And he's just not getting good looks right now. There's Harrow trying to break down the defense with Wilcher. Watch out. Ball got deflected. 
And it's out of bounds with one second on the shot clock, and Murphy is slow to get up for Florida. Yeah, did you notice the way he kind of lost his balance? And when you lose your balance in the air going to the floor, fortunately, he got his hands down, I think, quick enough to make sure he didn't really get hurt. You get it's going to check in. I think Billy Donovan senses yeah. that and wants to get Eric Murphy a breather. Yeah, this, is a, this is just a body check question and ask him how he's doing. One second on the shot clock. Oh. oh, off the rim. Goodwin got a decent look there. <laughs> it sure was better than I thought. Kentucky's lead has shrunk to three. Working around the perimeter, you get for Wilberton. This is where you dumped down to your point a second ago. Can he score? Young, he can. Over Poitras. Yeah, he's worked on that. That wasn't his jump hook. That was his jump squeeze, I guess, a little bit. Never really extended it, but he's been very effective with that and gotten better and better as the season's gone on. 45-44, Kentucky. Under 12 minutes to play now. Second half from Ruck. Uh, Wilcher just can't get on track either, huh, for Kentucky? Mays. He'll get it inside. Poitras now facing the rim against Young. Poitras trying to use his body. Double team. Poitras short. And it's rebounded by Yaget. Yeah, notice where the defensive guys pushed him out. That was a three or four foot shot that he ended up shooting seven feet away. Big difference for the jump hook. It just doesn't work that easily. Need to be going towards the hoop. Florida with a chance to go nice. in front. They lost Young on the inside. And Patrick Young converts. I think Rosario put a decent screen on the baseline cutter. Yeah, looks like Kentucky's going to talk things over now. It's an 8-0 run. 46-45, the number 11 team in the country, Florida, in front. Here's that extension trying to squeeze it up for Young. And much better pass and go right here on the pick down deep. Since Willie Cauley-Stein was called on his fourth foul, Florida has gone on an 8-0 run, and John Calipari is not going to take any chances here and watch this thing get any worse. Paulie Stein's going to check in at the 11-16 mark. I don't know about that decision, to be honest with you. I know, I know it's gotten a little worse in the last minute or so, but you're only down a point with 11 minutes left. I think you still have to stretch him out a little bit because if you're if you're Florida, you're coming after him in the next two minutes. Mays on the outside. Kentucky is going cold. Wiltshire against Yaget. Holson is in as well for Kentucky. Wildcats have missed on eight of their last nine field goal attempts. Nine to shoot. Paul Stein looking for position. Now it's Goodwin. They'll have to make something happen. Shot clock winding down. Goodwin, left hand. That won't go. Rebound. Holson hits the deck. And Florida converges in. It is a tie-up. Kentucky will have it with a possession arrow. So the mad scramble for the loose ball. Kentucky will retain it. Down a point at home. 1976. 23,000 plus on hand for Kentucky and Florida. Gators this season on the road, seven and five in SEC play, nine and five overall, including two and zero in neutral site games. Are they a two seed? Are they a three seed in the NCAA tournament? Kentucky is looking to get into the big dance. The defending champions in jeopardy. Blocked from behind as Pauly Stein tried to set up on the interior. Break through the help. That was the same set they ran after their last time out to get a big the ball down deep. Terrific help and squeeze. Billy Donovan refers to it as squeezing the post and double teaming the post. Pauly Stein has to be ready for some action coming over the top. Pauly Stein playing with four personal fouls. 10-36 mark of this second half. Florida up by one. Get it in. And the finish by Goodwin. Good set out of bounds. Little delayed cut just then by Goodwin. But Pauly Stein coming across. Florida falls away and plays the ball side when the weak side opened up. Ten points for the freshman with a 6-foot, 10-inch wingspan. Kentucky up by one. Murphy offers it up. Knocks it down. It's a three. Murphy had been quiet, hadn't he? I think those were his first points of the second half. Florida now six and nine from the field in the second half. They lead it 49-47. Murphy has 14 overall. 
Olsen looking to feed the post. Wiltshire against Murphy. Now they need something from Wiltshire here. Wiltshire left hand, no. Paulie Stein got his hand on it, but controlled by the Gators. Wiltshire is 0 of 6. Wilbekin, one on one with Goodwin. Wilbekin. Well, back it out, 18 to shoot. Nine and a half to play. Two point lead for Florida. Prather doesn't take the jump shot. Instead, works his way to the paint and scores. Now, did you notice Coley Stein that time defensively, Ian? Even with him on the floor, he's got to stay away from an attempt on the block shot. 51 47 Gators. We'll hit the nine minute mark of this second half. It's an extended 15 3 run for Florida. Mays buries the triple. Well, does he have a pretty jumper, doesn't he? When he squares his body up, he gets great rhythm on the jumper. And Billy Donovan thought he was making a little run here until they couldn't find Mays on the perimeter. And watch when Mays shoots the basketball. You see absolutely fabulous rotation when he shoots the ball. Mays, the transfer from Wright State. Spent two years at NC State. Graduate student coming through for Kentucky. Young could not get it to go as Pauly Stein just remained upright without leaving his feet. Mays. Can't hit the three. Rebounded by Murphy. But don't you think Young has to throw his shoulder right yep. to the chest? Agreed. Wilbekin feeds it. Murphy steps into the three. Drills it. He's got 17. Nice delayed break just then. And a big guy pulling up. I'd love to see him put the brakes on, hit the stops, and not follow through with losing his momentum with his jumper. Up and down, straight on for Murphy. Murphy is now 6 of 9 from the field today. Four-point lead for Florida. There's Poitras giving it back for Mays. Mays, the runner doesn't go. Coley Stein clogged up there. Eight to shoot. He's got to be smart with the ball right now. Shot clock's down to four. Mays jacks it up. Way off the mark. And the rebound controlled by Wilbekin. Florida trying to extend its lead here. A switch. Wilbekin stutter step. And we got Young with a mismatch. And here's another mismatch out front. Boyden feed it down low. Right now, Goodwin trying to stick with Young. Wilbekin lines it up. He buries the three. Scotty Wilbekin from long range. Florida up by seven. They took advantage of the double mismatch just then. A big down low with the little guy. Coley Stein was supposed to react to Wilbekin's shot. Not there in time. Florida, three out of three from three-point territory in the second half. The Gators have their largest lead. I mentioned was the fact that at under eight minutes, he wanted the crowd to stand up for the balance of the game. And I think if you look around right now, most of them are standing up. Yeah, I'd say the majority. majority yeah, well, some people, because of age, can't stand up this, as long as they might want. But oh, well, that's nice of you, Jimmy, to, to mention. I don't know if that's a personal issue <laughs> that you have. That's why I'm sitting. <laughs> the problem for Kentucky and for these fans, Florida has stymied the Wildcats with a 21 to 6 extended run. Florida now shooting 50% from the field. Pauly Stein rolling toward the rim and he coughs it up. Yep. Trouble handling the ball in there with traffic. Here's Boynton, kick out Rosario. Oh. Gives it to the wrong team. Pauly Stein was just getting back defensively. And going back to that John Calipari quote, sense of urgency, a must right now for Kentucky on their home floor with he seven to go. Call it a one game season for Kentucky. Coley Stein against Murphy. Works his way in. Oh, Bounce yeah. pass. That was dangerous. And yet Get comes out of the pack with it. That's twice Coley Stein has had the ball in the middle of the floor just then. Better off just jumping and using your size to get a shot off rather than tricky passes. Florida up by seven. Chance to add to it here. Spread the floor with Boynton. Boynton. Kick out. Murphy. Corner pop. Short. And it's rebounded by Poitras. We come up on six minutes to play, second half. This is a very big possession in this game right now. Triple header day here on CBS. A full afternoon of hoops as a foul is called against Florida. 
Eric Murphy, the senior, has stepped forward here today for the Gators. Florida looking to cruise into the NCAA tournament on a win streak. Game summary, Florida in front by seven. Their field goal percentage is on the rise now at 49%. Nine of 14 in the second half. Murphy leading the way with 17 points and nine rebounds. Right now, let's take a look at our AT&T fast analysis, Jimmy. Well, sometimes, Ian, when you try to get yourself a post-up play with one of your big guys, the best way to do it is to send a guard down and headhunt for a screen. As we take a look at this play, watch right here in the middle. You see Mike Rosario setting a great screen, and watch the defensive action by Kentucky. They don't know which, what to do, go high side or the guard pick up Young. But the young, the guard comes down and sets the screen for Young. He uses the body to make a good baseline cut. Kentucky's not home, and they get away with the two-pointer. The defending national champions in jeopardy of not making the NCAA tournament, looking to make a statement here today against Florida in the final regular season game of the SEC season before the conference tournament in Nashville. Goodwin to Cauley Stein. Offensive foul against Goodwin. First foul on Archie Goodwin. Left the feet. You get. Watch him step across. Uh, see, I'm, I, I think that's the right call by, by rule line, but I'm not so sure on that one, you know, because you got to give the player a little opportunity. The, 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 the official rule is there if the player leaves the floor and starts to get into a shooting motion, but he has to leave the floor. You can't move as a defender. Back it out now with 5.50 to play, second half. Boynton. But I'm not so sure I like that, that rule, if you will, in terms of the basketball defensive play. Will begin to the hoop. Poitras there defensively and Cauley Stein. Lee pass. Harrell gets it ahead. Good win. It doesn't go, but a foul. So close to a three-point opportunity. Instead, Goodwin's going to shoot a pair. And that was a terrific pass by Harrow because it was a little touchy with the traffic. But watch how the pass is going to come on this side of the floor right now. He throws it over two players, perfectly lobbed to him, and just misses getting the break with Young coming back defensively. So good transition basketball by Kentucky. And this guy who's had his troubles, four for eight from the line today, the last three games has not been shooting the ball well, at about 50% from the line. And Kentucky is now six of 13 at the free throw line. Don't forget, coming up, triple header action. UCLA at Washington is next on CBS. Notre Dame, Louisville will wrap up our college basketball afternoon here on CBS. Louisville with the six wins in a row. I am the last loss they had was to Notre Dame. Remember that five overtime game? It was wild. 57-51 Florida. One out of two for Goodwin. Need to stop Kentucky, and that's what the home fans know right now. They need to stop. Wilbekin uses the screen. There's the floater. Doesn't go. Rebound slapped out of there volleyball style by Young. Out of bounds. Pretty good effort there defensively for John Calipari's team, and I like what Young tried to do. He couldn't get his two hands on it, so he tried to smack it outside, but that thing was headed for the first row. Six-point lead for the Gators. Poitras on a bounce inside. Goodwin, nice touch. That's great execution. Terrific on the right side with Goodwin. Beautiful cut along the baseline, and the big fella making a delivery pass. So all of a sudden now, maybe the standing up is working for the crowd. 13 now for uh -oh, Archie Goodwin. Uh -oh. And a steal. Goodwin takes it away. Major elevation. Archie Goodwin taking it to the basket for two. I'm not so sure Florida opened that door. I, I think Kentucky just opened the door again because they were struggling. They got back on their heels and have made a great defensive effort. And a foul called on Goodwin as Wilbekin tried to establish position out the feed. There's the passing lanes. Goodwin takes a gamble, and it pays off. Kentucky has 13 points off of Florida turnovers. Archie Goodwin comes in averaging 14 points per game. He's got 15 here this afternoon. Boy, they're playing with a sense of urgency, though, aren't they, Kentucky, right now? 
Young, a back in. Coley Stein playing with four fouls. Young misses on the baby hook. Good work by Poitras to help him out off the glass because Coley Stein has to just stand there. It's hard to block out after that with four fouls and rebound. Tenth rebound for Alex Poitras. Kentucky with a chance to tie or take the lead. I like some of the delay cuts they've been running. Harrow to the hoop. Oh, oh. and slam! I don't think it won't count. No. Whistle was blown before Coley Stein finished it. Here's the tournament profile for Kentucky at 20 and 10, an RPI of 54, and the strength of schedule down at 83. They're quote unquote good wins. Missouri, Ole Miss, Tennessee, right. losses to Texas A&M at Georgia. They really need to add to the quality win list here against Florida. Well, this is clearly a resume rebuilder, if you will, for them. Harrell, a 70% shooter. Foul was called on Young, his second. Plus Kentucky, and they look at this too, Ian. How have you been playing the last seven or eight games? They had not been playing very, very well. We're all tied up. 57 apiece, a 7-0 run for Kentucky. Wait till March gets here, huh? <laughs> here we go. Florida turns it over. Wilbekin not on the same page with his teammate. Tied at 57 with 3.58 to play. Second half here at Rupp Arena. Kentucky and Florida. And the Wildcats going on this scoring run. Getting it done from all angles. And defensively making it happen with Goodwin pushing it down for that breakaway. Yesterday, John Calipari told our group, quote, it's a one-game season. I told these guys you have to fight. If you want to do something special, this is your chance. We know... It's been frustrating here in Big Blue Nation. The injury to Nerland's Noel. Defending national champions. The possibility of not making the NCAA tournament a year after you win the title. The pressure building on a young group. And I, and this is clearly in my mind what college basketball is all about. Because you have a team, Florida, that's better than Kentucky. But Kentucky reaching and fighting and using their home floor to really give them the enthusiasm. Poitras short on a three. Coley Stein the rebound. Gives it up to 20. Beckham the senior, but he is on the bench and not playing today. Out of bounds. There's Nerlens Noel. Beckham next to him. Florida trying to get back in front here with 3.35 to play. Long. Oh. Too high. Casey Prather trying to grab it off the pass from Wilbekin. Yeah, Wilbekin tries, but he's going to his left, which is the design of the play, but it makes it more difficult with a defender on your right to get a clear shot over the top. Willie Cauley-Stein picked up his fourth foul earlier in the second half. John Calipari sat him. Florida regained the lead by one. They went on an 8-0 run. Cauley-Stein was put back into the game. I'm not so sure you want to feature him on the blocks right now with the last three times he's touched it. Mays, catch and shoot. Can't hit the three. And it's rebounded by Murphy. Paulie Stein had to back off. He sure did. Good move by him, too. Wilbekin gives it up. Murphy's been terrific today. That's going to be a charge. It is going the other way. Number four now on the senior Eric Murphy of the Gators. And who picked up the charge, Ian? Take a look. The guy you just mentioned defensively, nice step across, holds his ground, doesn't lean forward, terrific positioning, and a relatively easy call for the officials who have done good, a good job this afternoon. 17 points, 10 rebounds, and now four fouls on Eric Murphy. A bounce inside, Coley Stone against Young, makes his move, left hand, doesn't get the roll, but he does draw the foul on Young. That's the decision we haven't seen him made two out of the three times he caught it. Catching it down low instead of looking to pass where his decisions weren't great. Actually loses that. It's almost like a slap shot going towards the basket. Now this is where he has to step up and hit a free throw. Which the numbers are not on his side as you take a look at his season numbers. 36%. As a team, Kentucky is 9 of 16 today. 
And Florida's has, eight of ten from the free throw line. Carly Stone nails the first. Well, that's a smooth looking shot for those kind of numbers. Sometimes they can be deceiving, but it's enough attempts to make a judgment on them. Kentucky on an 8 0 1. He's got to stay on the line and shoot the ball and finish it right here. There you go. Oh, and a bad break. He stayed right there with that one. Florida has turned it over four of the last five trips down the floor. And you got to get Patrick Young. There you go. Young missed it on the inside. That's a good call by Florida, but Young drifting away from a guy who has four fouls. It should be his basket on the offensive end. Pac-12 action coming up. UCLA at Washington next here on CBS. Harold the crossover. Plenty of time on the shot clock. 17 now on the timer. Harold directing traffic. Wilbekin there defensively. Paulie Stein not a threat from out there. 10 to shoot. Harrow swings it. Goodwin makes his move into the lane. Tried to squeeze it to Carly Stein. Shot clock's down to two. Carly Stein gives it up. Harrow a heave. It's off the mark and a shot clock violation. A wild sequence just then, that's for sure. Nothing happening for Kentucky. Now, this is the difference. I and your play. You got a great shift right here, psychological, right? You have an experienced team, the better team, playing on the road against the crowd. Whereas on the other flip side, you got a young team. Hopefully the crowd can help them play it, but they still have to play as an experienced group, which they're not in Kentucky. Over five minutes now without a point for Florida. Boynton, and the guards get active. Now it's Prather with 13 to shoot, under two minutes to go. The spin move, can't get it to drop. Prather the offensive board. Prather off the mark. And the long rebound comes out to Harrow. Murphy kept it alive to give them a second opportunity, but nothing there. Florida has missed its last five shots from the field. Kentucky with a one-point lead and the ball. A minute and a half to go here at Rook. Watch for Harrow driving and Mays off a screen. Here's Goodwin. Send off. Push Goodwin, off. it's an offensive foul. Arm extended. The left arm. Timeout, Florida. Third foul on Goodwin. Yeah, this is Tony Green, the official. Has a good look at that one. A little extension going the other way. Look at the game reset. Florida has two timeouts. Kentucky with one. 17 fouls against Kentucky. Possession arrow favors Florida. Last time the Gators won here at Rupp was back in 2007. Joe Noah and Corey Brewer, Al Horford. Well, obviously something with the Florida players, the current ones have never won here. Yep, these seniors, Royton and Murphy, have never gotten a win in Lexington. 58-57, Kentucky in front. Just over a minute to go. Wilbekin the drive. Nice work there by Coley Stein. Kick out. Murphy puts it on the deck. Wilbekin on a pump. Fortress there defensively. Plenty of time still. Nice hand. Florida gets it back though. Ten to shoot under a minute to go. Wilbekin to the hoop. Wilbekin. That won't go. Coley Stein with a rebound. And Kentucky has got it with 50 seconds to play, up by one. Wilbekin tried to get a foul on that play, and I am with his energy level going towards the defender. He tried to hit him, he missed, and that caused him to miss the layup. Down to 35 seconds left. 58-57 Kentucky. Outside for the senior Mays. Chuck clock is down to 10. Goodwin with seven. Goodwin, a foul call. And they're over the limit, double limit. Archie Goodwin going to the free throw line for a pair. Now Goodwin goes to his right very strongly, sets him up, he crosses. That's a good call from the officials. It's a right call. The Prather with the body bump, but once again, Goodwin going to the line iron who has troubles, has been shooting the ball, you know, with difficulties. Five of ten, and a little bit of freeze time now. Goodwin will have to think about it. Timeout called by Billy Donovan. From the Pac-12, coming up here on CBS, UCLA at Washington, second game of our triple header. Florida has gone scoreless since the 7.36 mark of this second half. Kenny Boyton 
has not taken a shot in the second half. Two free throws coming up right now for Archie Goodwin. So now if you think this thing very quickly, right on, you have Goodwin forgetting about whether he makes one, two, or misses. If he, regardless, you have 25 seconds on the clock. Goodwin well short on the first. So now even so, without a three-point deficit, you don't have to think three. Plenty of time for Florida. They're going to be down one or two right now if they get the basketball back without any turnovers. They have plenty of time to take it to the basket, drive, look, and then kick if they need to. One out of two for Goodwin. 59, 57, Kentucky. Kentucky has 17 fouls, so they're at the limit. Shot clock is turned off. 15 seconds left. Bolton, a jumper for the tie. No good. Knocked out of bounds. Young touched it last. Bolton got a pretty good look just then off the bounce. like Young dragged it out of bounds right there. Good call from the officials. And a timeout taken with 10.8 left here at Rupp Arena. And Greg, the story here in Lexington. Game reset. Florida, no timeouts left. Kentucky has one. Kentucky has the basketball with 10.8 remaining up by two. Now keep in mind a couple of things here. Florida is very good with double teaming, right? So you're going to see a pass come in and they're going to double team and hopefully if they don't get a quick strip from Florida's perspective, that foul has to occur at about the eight second or more on the clock. So they don't want to burn that much time. The other side, Kentucky right now has Mays at 84%, Wilshire at 82%. One of those two guys need to catch the basketball unless Harold from down the other end of the floor gets in play at 70%. It's a 9-0 run for Kentucky. And a foul amount. They get it into Mays, and he is fouled with 9.4. Florida has no timeouts remaining. The Gators have missed their last 10 shots from the field. And so they get their best free throw shooter at the line against Billy Donovan's team right now. Mays at 84%. Happens to be senior afternoon, doesn't it? He was honored before the game. <laughs> His family here in town, Julius Mays, a graduate student. Yep. You can't write a better storyline for him right now at the line with this game in, bal in the balance with his two free throws right here. Chance to make it a two-possession game. Kentucky up by two. First attempt. Is good. He is smooth. He's a smooth shooter. And the ball doesn't lie either. I when you when you shoot it, and have spin on it. He's got a great extension. And this is the easier of the two, not to say it's a done deal right here, but getting that first one to go over from a pressure standpoint is the tougher of the two shots. Now let's see if he stays right on the line. Second attempt for Mays. He hits 61-57, Kentucky. Seven seconds left. Wilbekin a three. No good. Rebounded by Poitras. Kentucky comes through in a must-win scenario. The Wildcats defeat Florida 61 to 57. The defending national champions try to make a case for getting into the big dance this year. For Jim Spinarco, this is Ian Eagle. So long from Lexington. UCLA at Washington coming up game two of our triple header here on CBS an 11 0 run to finish it off for Kentucky. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports home of the 2013 men's national championship. Enjoy your day everybody.